Hello everyone, so we've just recently learned about the conservation of linear momentum and now we're going to practice this in an a, in a example question. So here in this question we have a person called Bob who is skating towards Jane at a velocity of 5 meters per second to the right. Jane is initially stationary but moves with Bob after the collision. Determine the velocity of Bob and Jane after the collision. So we know that when two objects collide momentum is conserved. Mathematically we said that that means that if you add up all the momentum before the collision then it should be equal to all of the momentum after the collision. So I is for initial, F is for final. All that you do at this point is you choose a direction as positive. You can just choose right if you want. And so what we're gonna have is you're gonna have two sets of brackets on the left and then two sets of brackets on the right like that and it will always be like that there are other ways of doing it but this way always works so here you're gonna have the mass of let's say mass of Bob velocity of Bob and then I'll put an I over here for initial then mass of Jane velocity of Jane I for initial and then the same thing on the other side mass of Bob velocity of Bob and that's final and then mass of Jane, velocity of Jane, and that's final. Why am I using mass times velocity? Because we know that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Now you literally just have to fill things in. So the mass of Bob is 50, the velocity of Bob is 5, and he is going to the right, and so we chose right as positive, so that's going to be positive. The mass of Jane is 45, and they tell us that she's initially stationary, meaning she's not moving. And now what we do now is we fill in the right hand side, so the mass of Bob will still be 50. We don't know what velocity of Bob will be. And then mass of Jane is 45, but we don't know, but we don't know what her velocity will be at the end. What we do know is that they are going to move off together, because they said that moves with Bob after the collision, so their velocities are going to be the same. So on the next line, I'm just going to say that velocity of Bob, final, is equal to velocity of Jane. And so I can just call those V. So then I'm just going to go erase these two velocities and just call them V. Like that. Now what some teachers like to do, and you can do this, but you don't have to. Because their velocities are the same, some teachers take out a common factor of V, and then they just add their masses together. So if your teacher ever does something where they take out the velocity and then they say mass 1 plus mass 2 or anything like that, you can do it like that. It's absolutely fine. You can also do it the way I'm doing it here. It's your choice. What we end up with now is just a simple equation. So we know that 45 times 0 is just 0. 50 times 5 is 250. And then 50V plus 45V is going to equal 95V. And so if we divide by 95, we're going to end up with, therefore, V is equal to 2.63 meters per second. And so because we got a positive answer, we can say to the right. Notice we don't have to assume that they were going to move to the right. You just you don't want to put like a negative V or something. You just say V and the maths will take care of it. So we can say to the right. And so that is the velocity that they're going to move off with. It makes sense that they move off at 2.63. Why? Because Bob was initially traveling at 5. If he collides into someone, he's obviously going to get slowed down. And so it makes sense that their final velocity is less than the original velocity of 5.